Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... <laughs> ..to dodgy decor... Come, warm yourself at my medieval hearth. I mean, it's a joke. Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. <coughs> that is filthy. Or her quest for perfection. I don't want to go. It'll be the end. The reality is, darling, this is the business we're in. This week, a battle of wills in the Herefordshire Hills. That completely disgusts me. Yeah. He's obviously completely determined to ignore me. I, I'm astonished that you fundamentally misunderstand what we do here at Hill House. And I'm fundamentally astonished by how incredibly rude you are. It's Alex. House. Eleven years ago, Duncan Staten left his job and home in St Albans to open the Hill House B&B in Ross-on-Wye with his partner Alex and their kids. They dreamed of the good life. Hey, Piggy, come on. I'm a bit worried that he might be gay because he hasn't done the business yet. It's no good, you're going to be sausages. They're both interesting in permaculture, really. Um, sustainable living, stuff like that. This is wood for the biomass boiler, the wood-burning boiler. It's got to be dry. The philosophy of the house really is local food, organic, local produce, and um, the, the best of fare. Well, King Richard the chicken heart is the uh, big cockerel. Let's see if they've got any eggs. Get out of it. I've described the whole house as being relaxing, Easy going. Easy going, relaxed place to come and stay. This is our poetry and wisdom wall. We invite people to write on the on the wall, um, preferably keeping to poet, poetry or wisdom, but some people haven't quite got the right idea. Eggs for breakfast. <laughs> but Duncan has discovered it's not easy being green. Although they have a small, loyal clientele, the B&B makes pitiful profits. It means Alex must go out to work to make ends meet. And with no money to pay staff, Duncan is having to run Hill House single-handed. Bloody, bloody, bloody. At the moment, I can't afford to give up my job in order to work here because all that's rubbish income that I get, it's a steady income. This is how you make the bed, make the bed, make the bed. Duncan works like, you know, he's a complete maniac. I'm he doesn't stop from the enough. minute he wakes up to the minute he goes to bed at midnight. He doesn't stop. People in hotels all over the world think, you don't do quilts like that. Well, I bloody do. The punishing workload has meant a string of unfinished projects around the grounds and the 400-year-old house slipping towards disrepair. Yeah, it's getting quite stressed out, yeah. The frustration of, of not getting things finished the future for the B&B and the family's precious way of life is looking far from certain. The worst thing that could happen is we, we could go bust. Um, we, we just, um, we would have to sell and go. Um, don't know what to do, really. We've come to a bit of a full stop. Semicolon, anyway. Yeah. Duncan and Alex are hoping that renowned hotelier Alex Polizzi can help turn their meagre fortunes around. I can already see a certain amount of disorder. There's mismatched tables and chairs, a half-rotten hanging basket swing, rotten wooden benches, lots of cigarette butts. The whole place looks like it needs a really good sweep and tidy. He doesn't like being told what to do, so it'll be interesting when he meets Alex. <laughs> to get a guest's eye view of the B&B, Alex will stay the night. Duncan? 
Hello, hello. Welcome, Hi. Welcome to Hill House. Thank nice you. to see you. So nice to meet you. Thanks oh, for inviting glad me. Glad you could come. Do you want to tell me what room? What room? Put we're you in the dryad suite. Um, okay. Yeah. What are you charging for that night? Thirty-five. Both the suites are thirty-five per person per, per night, bed and breakfast. Yeah. And the ordinary rooms are twenty-nine bed and breakfast. Gosh, darling, that's a bargain in this day and age. Well, yeah. let's see. Yeah, tell us about it. All right, right. lovely. Thank you. So this is the main room of the dryad suite. Who decides on the decor? Me. I did this room. So the entire decorative scheme yeah. is yours? Come out of my fevered brain yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and charity shops and stuff skips. like that. Skips. <laughs> some skips, some skips. Yeah, bloody good stuff in skips. Do I have permission to have a good snoop about the, snoop the other away. rooms? It's the best way if you just, just wander away. Thank yeah, you so way. much, Duncan. And then I'll come back and chat to you and we'll start working mm. out where I think that you need right. some help. And I'll do help. as I'm told. I don't like criticism, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try and listen and I'll be open-minded. And uh, But I'm not promising anything, really. Everything is extremely dusty. This door's nice and dirty. And a very nicely stained tablecloth. I hope she's broad-minded enough to realise that we are slightly different and we're going for slightly different people than your average hotel-goers. I'd love to know why I've got some perky-breasted, hairy-legged dryads on these doors. Ho, ho. This must be a little joke. A skeleton in every closet. Probably Duncan's idea of a bit of fun. The Hill House has two suites and three standard rooms. Woohoo! Shagpile heaven. All with ensuite bathrooms. <laughs> I do always like to see a few agricultural implements in a bathroom. It gives it a certain tall. Priced around 30 to 35 pounds per person per night, bed and breakfast. Ah, yuck! Oh, you see, this is another example of something that Duncan probably thinks is very witty. The largest room is the North Suite, which comes with its own balcony and bespoke pine en suite. Well, this is a lovely big room, and I really like the bed up on this little platform. But that's pretty much where the positives end. This is clearly intended to be the ethnic room, with the brasses, that truly repulsive wall hanging, and the plates, etc. I'm sure that Duncan thinks that I'm going to make him declutter, and I am, but not because I want it to be less quirky. I just want it to be better. Everyone thinks they have good taste, and what everyone does is that simple. Faced with a reluctant owner, will Hill House be an uphill struggle for the hotel inspector? This, for me, is incomprehensible. Mm. It's a business. You're not doing this for love, you're doing this for money. No, I ain't doing it. <laughs> the Hill House in ross on Wye. Puny profits have left owner Duncan Staten struggling to run the B&B &B single-handed, while partner Alex has to go out to work to bring in cash. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi is striving to secure the business's future, but there are already signs Duncan may be reluctant to change. I don't like criticism, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try and listen, but I shall disagree with her if she says we've got to do too much. The decor in the cluttered guest rooms has failed to impress. Now Alex takes her investigations downstairs. Stuff, stuff everywhere. Why would anybody have their books like this? I mean, I'm itching just to... It just takes no time at all and it looks so much better. Ooh, look how filthy this is. It might be kind of boring and bourgeois to worry about things like cleanliness and 
Well, for example, that disgusting fish tank that is completely furred up with green gunk. I find that rather off-putting. Onward, ever onward. Gosh, that has been made by generations of a spider. There's just such disorder everywhere. I, you know, I'm all for shabby chic, but this is shabby shite. Perhaps Duncan's cooking will be more to Alex's taste. Wherever possible, he uses produce from the garden or from local suppliers. Supper is a bargain priced £15 for three courses. I try and give as, as much as we can <laughs> for the lowest price. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know what they feed these chickens on, but they're big, baby. We just charge £10 for a bottle of wine. Some wine will make a couple of pounds on, and some it's just pence. These are very generous helpings. This is dinner for two, but it's still half a chicken each. Very nice vegetables. I believe she will enjoy the food, but whether she says she's enjoying it or not, I don't know. If she isn't, oh, I'll just tip it over her head. This is fantastic. Oh, jolly good. I have a question for you. This mm -hmm. is a meal for two. Yes. What does it cost per person to put on the plate? I haven't worked that out. 15 quid for this cheese and ice cream mm. is ridiculously cheap. You know, right. so you've really okay. got to think, you're not doing this for love, darling. You're doing this, this is a business. Mm. That's true, yes, that's true. So, well, I'm sure that tomorrow morning when I ask you what it costs to put breakfast on a plate, you're going to have the answer at your fingertips. Oh, of course, yeah. Good, Duncan. Know... I'm giving you the heads up. Right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> But next morning, it's evident that Alex's demand for a breakfast breakdown has not been enthusiastically embraced. She's insisted that I work out how much the breakfast costs. I really don't know. Um, I own eggs about 20p. That's 40p. Uh, the, the juice costs 250. But, I mean, what's that? It's kind of soulless, isn't it? Morning. Morning. OK, to come in. You're, you're decent. <laughs> This'll make a man of me, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> Jesus. Cute. Did you work out for me what this cost to put on the plate? No, no, I haven't. <sighs> and the juice, I mean, just juice for breakfast, is impossible trying to work out um, how much people have. The point is, darling, you have to focus your mind on what it is that you're giving and what it is it costs you to put it on the table. Mm. There's a cost to everything you produce and you have to make sure that you make a profit on that correctly, otherwise there's no point running this as a business. Right, OK. Hello, it's uh, Duncan here at the Hill House. Hiya. Look, I've got a really stupid question for you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, there's this tyrant staying here, and I've got to work out exactly how much um, a breakfast costs. Can you tell us how much a rasher of bacon is, one of those big ones I had yesterday, and how much one sausage would be? It's really stupid, isn't it? He seems to be making a virtue out of this business stupidity that he has. You know, he laughs his yeah. jolly green giant laugh as if I've asked him a ridiculous question. Well. Surely it's a question he should be asking himself every day. Tea, I don't know, 50p. Loaf of bread, 150. <laughs> How much bread do they have? This is the opposite to every crappy mass-produced breakfast anywhere. It's wonderful. So, so far, Duncan's shown himself to be rather good in the kitchen and rather devil-may-care about his costings. Oh, this is impossible, it's stupid. This is completely wrong and alien and ridiculous. So will Duncan be receptive to Alex's plans to boost his B&B's bookings and profits? First, there's one part of the business she finds unacceptably organic. So you cooked me a lovely dinner last night, yes. but you cooked it in a... Th yes. I mean, yes, horrible. that completely yeah. disgusts me. Yeah. We go into the dining room. And last night, I was thinking to myself, when's the last time this was even hoovered? There's food mm. all over the floor. Mm. I mean, this, for me, is incomprehensible. Mm. There's just disorder mm. everywhere. 
clearly you are challenged on the cleaning front and I would suggest yes, that you would make yes. life a lot easier if you had less stuff that collected dust. I don't have enough time to get down my hands and knees. And, uh, you know, there's loads of other things that I'm not, not just in here doing this. No, yeah, so. but if you want to find out from me how you can mm. improve your prices, how you can get busier. Mm. Um, yes, you, you have, have to. Have to get this this is this is a non-negotiable part of it. Yeah, Do you it's see difficult. What... Yeah. Next, Alex wants Hill House to become a lean, green, money-making machine. And the fact that you have this kind of rather cavalier attitude to every financial question I ask you. Yes. <laughs> is mm. shocking because you're working yourself into the ground. Mm for not enough reward. Right. And as well as looking at how you can charge more money, mm. you have to see how you can decrease your costs. Mm. I think you're potty to be making one pound profit on a bottle of wine. You buy a bottle of wine for nine pounds and you sell it for 18. Um, this is not ripping people off. Because otherwise... It's a lot, isn't it? A lot of money to pay for a bottle of wine, isn't it? It's a business. You're not doing this for love, you're doing this for money. Oh, I don't know if I could... I feel really guilty. Finally, Alex wants Duncan to make more of his environmental credentials and she'll make over the North Suite to help tap into the lucrative green tourism trade. I like quirky, I like individual. I don't want this to be like every other place one goes to. I don't want it to be anodyne. Okay. It's a reflection of you and Alex. I appreciate that. But if you want to charge more, you have to give more. Yes. Righto? Right, OK. Gosh, much less screaming and shouting than I expected. No, it? no screaming and shouting. No. <laughs> Thank you, right. Bye. Bye-bye. But although Duncan's all smiles as Alex leaves, it soon becomes clear he's far from convinced. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? Crunching bones. It's Alex. <laughs> Nevertheless, he sets to work cleaning. It was worthwhile Alex coming just for her to tell me to dust the bloody books. So I've done that. Polishing. I used to do it lots, but I don't seem to have had the time recently. And tidying. Well, I've freed up the fag ends. I started putting grass down, but uh, it's too late to plant grass seed. But I put some soil down. Uh, trouble is, the cats are using it as a toilet now. So I don't know which is more respectful, having my dog ends out there or, or cat poo. But when it comes to breaking down his costs, Duncan has decided to make a stand. I'm not going to spend any time doing it. You know, I've got more important things to do. I haven't got a big army of people to, to do everything for me. I've got to do everything myself. And I'd rather be polishing the floor than sitting, um, adding up a column of figures and accounts and finding out that we could make 35 pence more profit if we didn't give people an extra shot of coffee in the morning. Oh, for goodness sake, you know. No, I ain't doing it. Has the hotel inspector finally met her match? I'm astonished that you fundamentally misunderstand what we do here at Hill House. We know that some people like you, but it's not enough to make your business work. If a room in Ross isn't your bag and you fancy being whisked away to your own piece of paradise, where you can soak up the sun and swim in clear blue seas, you're in luck as we're giving away a luxurious holiday for two to the Maldives, courtesy of the Waldorf Astoria Beach House Maldives. You and a guest will stay for seven nights full board in a beautiful beach villa overlooking the powder white sands of the private island resort in Ha Alifu Atoll. And to make sure you both return feeling completely relaxed, you'll also receive a treatment for two in the open air spa. All you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 0555 or text HOTEL to 6550. Or send your name and phone number on the back of a postcard to Hotel Inspector 1, PO Box 62244, London N81BB. Calls cost £1.53 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Texts cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com forward slash win.
Duncan Staten has run the Hill House B&B in Ross-on-Wye for 11 years. But with a niche market and minuscule profits, its future is in jeopardy. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi discovered that although it was green, it was far from clean. Four weeks after her first visit, she's back to see if the seemingly defiant Duncan has acted on her plans. So far, Duncan definitely seems to have got the message. The exterior has been massively cleaned up, and I only hope that the same is true of the inside. Gosh, well, Duncan's done a lot here already. The leaflets all tidied up, and it all looks a lot cleaner. I'm pretty impressed. I thought Duncan would need a lot more prodding to get this far. Duncan! Hello. Hello there. Oh, nice to see you again. I'm very impressed with what you've done here I'm so doing far. what I've been told. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah, it does look good. You were right. <laughs> you were right. Is it all right if I go and have a look oh, around? Oh, you carry on. I'll put the kettle on. Lovely. Thank <laughs> you. Despite the improvements, Behind the bar, there remains a potent symbol of Duncan's rebellion. Duncan's tidying up obviously hasn't stretched to the back of house area because behind the bar is still a fucking mess. Thank you. Right, well, it looks to me like you've made some efforts here. I've uh, been trying. But, Duncan, yeah. but, Duncan, yes. but, Duncan... Yes. I know you love the cobweb. But yeah, really, I put a spider it, it in it. Have you it seen the spider? It isn't listed, darling. <laughs> and although I know you find it amusing, yeah, I do. Remember, mm. what we're trying to do here is make this place appealing to more than the kind of person who finds big cobwebs amusing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right, the cobweb. You're saying the cobweb has to go. <laughs> Have you got on with the other things I asked you to do? What did you ask me to do? Costings. Oh yeah, I've done all that. Yeah. Have mm. you? Mm. You're lying through your <laughs> teeth, aren't you? Have um, you done anything? No, no. Duncan has refused Alex's request to break down his costs, citing fears that raising his prices will put off his guests. I think he's dragged his heels so much because he knows that the results are going to be parlous. I think he knows and is ashamed about how unbusinesslike he's been, that actually he's all sound and fury signifying nothing. He works, but he works incredibly inefficiently. And what is the point of working if you're not going to make any money at the end of the day? To get her point across, Alex has made a temporary change to Duncan's unique wall of poetry and wisdom. As you see, you've got a new wall of wisdom. This is all customers of yours who we've contacted oh. and asked whether they would be prepared to spend an extra tenner oh. I mean, well, darling, they all agree. Oh, Charging more <laughs> wouldn't deter us from going back. I'd be happy to pay an extra £10 a night as the breakfast really does warrant it. Oh, really? So, darling, the general consensus is you're too cheap. And so it isn't just me who's telling you. Right. Your customers who like you and who like coming here mm. tell you to put up your prices. There's a difference between ripping people off mm. and making a profit. And yes. you really, yeah. to survive, we need to make sure that you make a profit. <laughs> That's wonderful. OK? <laughs> With Duncan seemingly more on side, Alex wants to enthuse him about her intended makeover of the North Suite. She's planning an eco-friendly design that Duncan can trumpet to the growing green tourism market. So she's taking him to Bailey's, a local store that specialises in renewed and recycled products. I kind of think that there's some stuff here that's fab mm. and then there's lots of extraneous stuff that is just purely decorative mm. and that's the last thing we need. Mm. But I was just thinking about how to kind of add value to your room. Yes. Boxes for dirty linen, things like this for teas and coffees is quite nice too, aren't they? Let's go and have a look through this way. Look at these, these are lovely. <laughs> they're not, they're horrible. Well, then they'd be much nicer than what you've got in your <laughs> no, bathroom currently. No, they wouldn't. No, anything That's in the bathroom. That's very got. chic. It's not chic at all, it's awful. Chic? OK, no. well, what about something like that, then? That's a little nicer for the outdoor patio furniture, yeah. It's also nice for a bathroom, darling. You just... Oh, I Cold. Hate... Sit on that naked. <laughs> Not practical. But I do like these stools. Yeah, nice stools. Yeah. 
very nice stools. This is the kind of thing that I was thinking that you could have organic, unbleached linen towels. Mm. It's just quite nice to have the kind of things that guests could come and buy themselves if they wanted to. Or you could go and you could source any product from any local supplier, as long as you say where it's from, so that your guests have a feeling that they're somehow connected to the local community and they could go out and buy it themselves if they wanted mm. to. Yes? An yeah, idea? That, that would be good. Mm. Look at the state mm. of that covered oh, in dust. The trip hasn't fired Duncan up the way Alex had hoped. Uh, very nice, uh, but they're, they're frippery, you know, t twitty, twaddly. Uh, it wouldn't be pretty practical. Um, a few nice bits, and obviously, but uh, nothing for us, really. Got to be practical and, uh, you know, live in the real world. I think Duncan, for all his apparent laissez-faireness, is a bit of a control freak. He doesn't really like it very much when anyone tells him what to do or anyone takes over. He has picked up his game, um, and he's definitely attentive to what I'm saying, but it takes him a lot to actually pick his bloody sticks up and get a move on. A few weeks later, Alex's team begin work transforming the North Suite. The North Suite was the um, slightly eastern, sort of Arabic, passage to India kind of wafting. That's the, that's the idea I had when I made it, so I don't know if they're carrying that theme through or not. Hope so. They're using environmentally friendly paint, organic linens, and adding energy efficient touches. Hello, Hill House. Meanwhile, Duncan is making some reluctant concessions. First, the finances. Extra. I need to work out the money side of things, so I am going to cost things out. If anything, just to shut her up. Yeah. Then, the cobweb. It's part of the new ethos of the Hill House. There's going to be no spiders' webs here, no spiders. Sorry, spiders, you've got to go. Alex says so. Nine years to build, nine seconds to destroy. Two weeks later, and Alex is back to see if Duncan has finally come round to her way of thinking. Duncan! Hello. This looks nice. Hi there. Oh, yeah. Give it a look at paint. How are you? Yes. Oh, very well, thanks. Very well, yeah. What other changes are there? Pricing structure, any changes, any movement there? Yeah, as instructed, I put the prices up. We're now 39 and 34. And costings? Yes, I costed the supper and I put the supper price up. Well, it was 15, I put it up to 21. Very good. Bar, how's that looking? Oh, it's de, uh, de oh, yeah. de-webbed. Oh, de-webbed. Oh, it's been de-webbed, yes, yes. And yeah. the suite? The suite's a nightmare. In an effort to boost the Hill House's green appeal and attract a less niche clientele, Alex's team have taken the North Suite with its dusty clutter and eastern vibe, and created a bright, clean and environmentally aware sleeping space. Gone is its leaking and dated wooden bathroom, replaced by a functional and elegantly stylish suite. Ah, <sighs> Good. It is much plainer than it was before. Yes. Do you not like it? I don't like the style, no. What, what do you think the style is? Spanish two-star hotel, Lorette de Mar. What makes it seaside two-star hotel in Spain look for you? The shower curtain drapes. The lack of any kind of hanging around the bed. I, I'm astonished that you fundamentally misunderstand what we do here at Hill House, our weekend trade. You just don't get it. People come all the way from London through the on a Friday night, the traffic through the snow and the rain to come here to chill out for a weekend in front of a cosy fire, not on a hard mat floor, um, in, a, in a Lloyd Loom upright chair. This isn't what we do. This isn't what we're about. OK, and I'm fundamentally astonished by, A, how incredibly rude you are by not saying to me, thank you very much for sorting out my manky bathroom and making this look clean and neat and tidy. I don't believe that anyone could say that this is worse than you had before. It might not be to your taste, but then add the sodding drapes, bring back the old-fashioned chairs, put in what you like, darling. All I've done is given you a nice clean room because we know that some people like you, but it's not enough to make your business work. 
So what I'm trying to do is open it up to a new market who actually might think that it's quite nice to come into a clean, airy night's room that isn't covered with bits of odds and sods and tat. This is nasty, cheap, low quality, two-star Lorette de Mar. This isn't what we do at the Hill House. It, crappy little Lloyd well, Loom chairs. Well, bring in other chairs, yeah. though. But okay. why is that so difficult? Uh, okay, well, well, in, I'm going to. Just bring in what you want to bring in. You know, I would like him to try and see outside his spectrum and realise that actually there are markets that he's not tapping into. But unless he's willing to give it a go, then what's the point? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Believe you me, that's how I feel about Duncan at the moment. Some of the stuff she said sensible, and the sensible things she said I've done. Well, I'm not grateful. Sorry. An uneasy truce descends on Ross on Wire. But Alex isn't ready to give up on Duncan yet. She's convinced that Hill House needs better marketing and more guests, and she has a scheme to boost both. Duncan. So, the whole game plan here has been to try and sell some more rooms for you. Mm -hmm. As we know, you're very successful to a certain segment of the market. I want to try and broaden that out. What I'm envisaging that we do is we have a sort of press day. We'll have a handful, I'm thinking about six or seven movers and shakers in the green community who will come here, have a look round Hill House, be entertained by you, host of the most, who will also cook them a delicious dinner. We'll talk to them about your vision of the place. Mm -hmm. Now that you've put your prices up, mm. if we can also sell some more rooms, hopefully the profitability will also rise. Oh, that sounds great. Is that OK? What room do you think I should put them in? I leave it entirely in your hands, mm. Duncan. But by opening Hill House up to the critics, will Alex be opening a can of worms? You're only allowed 25 centilitres of apple juice per person, otherwise I have to charge you 180 quid for a refill. <laughs> He's obviously completely determined to ignore me. <laughs> the Hotel Inspector, brought to you by Playtex. Hi, Mom. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, darling. The Hill House, Ross on Y. For the past four months, Hotel Inspector Alex Polizzi has been trying to help owner Duncan Staten secure a future for his home and business and prevent his family's dreams of the good life from turning bad. It's really important for, for, our, for our family to, that this place gets better. We can't carry on with the way things are going at the moment because it's just uh, run us ragged, I think. Hmm. But her attempt to attract a broader market for the idiosyncratic B&B has seen her lock horns with Duncan. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Believe you me, that's how I feel about Duncan at the moment. Well, I'm not grateful. Sorry. A dissatisfied Duncan claimed Alex's design had failed to capture his B&B's laid-back attitude. Now she's added a few simple touches. But will they be enough? She's come good in the end, in the end, yeah. It's looking much better now with the, with the drapes. Um, yes, she understood my point of view and has actioned it. Yeah, she's, she's done as she was told. With Duncan seemingly satisfied, it's time to implement the final part of Alex's plan to put more bums on the B&B's beds. Um, yeah, I've got some, um, some people coming tomorrow and I'd okay. like, like them to try some of your elderly in Blackberry. OK, yeah, no Wine, problem, no problem. Convinced Duncan isn't making the most of his eco-friendly attributes. Say eight uh, the specials, please, and a handful of bacon. Thanks. She's arranged for the great and the good of the green media to visit Hill House in the hope they'll spread the word across the land. I have said to Duncan again and again that he needs to make more effort to promote all his green initiatives. And that's why I've invited these journalists and I'm hoping that that means it will make much more of a splash in the green movement. Anything that sort of was Alex's idea is does tend to give me the shivers a little bit, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> There's a very powerful green pound, and I'd like more of it to be spent here. 
three of the green movers and shakers will be spending the night. Oh, welcome. Welcome to Hill House. Thank you very much. And they'll be joined tomorrow by another contingent of critics. And this is the North Suite. Right. Really good. Really good colours. You like the blue? I like the blue, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Up and down. It's Duncan's chance to charm the guests and big up his credentials. Vegan, vegan breakfast. Cut some true clippings from outside, carrot tops, potato peelings, usual thing. You You're know. joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you might get a bit of uh, paranormal activity. Paranormal? Well, it might just be me outside with a sheet on my head, actually, just uh, dancing about. <laughs> Why you come down the bar later and have, have plenty to drink? Yes, too much, too much some, to drink. Some vegan beer. And... <laughs> right. Yes. Um, I'm going to go and check that right now. Excellent. <laughs> if not, there's water in the tap. I think it's important for Duncan to grow up. Sometimes it's quite useful to be a bit more mainstream, and most people are a bit more mainstream than Duncan is. The dryad suite. Um, mental, I think, probably, <laughs> was my first, my first impression. Breakfast on the big day. And although Duncan may not have wholeheartedly embraced Alex's plan, it does seem he may be beginning to realise the potential pitfalls of a poor performance. I've run out of black pudding and I've broken egg. Damn things. And I haven't got bubble and squeak. The whole place is completely filled with rack and roll. If they hate it and everything's awful, then um, they won't write nice things about us in their publications. So it'll have been a dead loss. So the eggs from. Eggs are our own now. The eggs are your own. Uh, Jim yeah. started laying again now, yeah. Is this local? Yes, unlabeled. Jam? Are, they, are they wild raspberries? Or are yeah, they... there are. It's down by the. Um, yeah. What's the story with the sausages? Um, they're, uh, well, they're uh, sadly not our own because our pigs aren't doing the business, but uh, uh, from the butchers and they're uh, Glostrol spot pigs. You're only allowed 25 centilitres of apple juice per person, otherwise I have to charge you 180 quid for a refill. <laughs> That's all right. So no toast? No, thanks. It's beating me. I don't think I can finish any more. The whole lot's just too much. With half a dozen sharp-eyed writers and journalists about to descend on Hill House, Alex arrives to lend her support. You know why these little people like this? Why? Why is that here? Yeah, does it belong here? No. I think I may have mentioned to Duncan once or twice before just how important a first impression is. That tin, these bits of wood, sweet wrappings. He's obviously completely determined to ignore me. <sighs> There's nothing Alex can do now but throw open the doors and greet the guests. Come in, come in. A formidable mix of green gurus. Do you know if he does all the decoration? Oh, I've got a skeleton in the closet. They're given freedom to roam the house. Oh, this is a lovely room. Blessed <laughs> Yosocratic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Just Tempted with some local tipple. Ladies, will you have a drop? A drop. And then it's down to Duncan to impress with his home cooked fare. I've drunk lots of English champagne and lots of English wine, and I'm pretty blasted, really. I'm all, all the tears, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, the journalists are just eating, but they haven't drunk. They've had cups of herbal tea, which is quite peculiar, but um, uh, I'm having a nice time anyway. <laughs> This is how we drain the greens, drain the greens, <laughs> I think it's going quite well. The food is delicious. We know that Duncan can cook, so that doesn't surprise me. People think because you're eating vegan, it's got to be rubbish, it's got to be sort of no. substandard. If he keeps it down with the clever quips, we're going to be OK. <laughs> <laughs> the finale is a tour of the grounds. So this is outside. Cat sled, I think. Walk down carefully because it's a bit treacherous. You come in and you think this is a bit, you know, it's a little bit untidy. It's a bit, you know, a bit like an archaeological dig. This is 
work in progress is going to be the Eco House. Um, what, yeah. 2020? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, God. Just, it's just so higgledy-piggledy mess. I just can't bear the fact that he doesn't pick up after himself. Alex is hoping the green VIPs can unlock a significant new market for the B&B. Oh, no, but has Duncan won their support? Well, I have to say, Duncan's very friendly, makes you feel very at home. My one bit of advice to him would be to try and pull a bit more order out of the chaos. I do think tidying up more, and it's a slight letdown to not have a more welcoming arrival, I think. It was great to see tasty, honest, home-cooked food. The commitment to sort of organic food and the local produce is, is exceptional. But you're undercharging. You can't be sustainable just by doing the deep green things and, and forgetting the bottom line. So we really need you to tidy those elements up. And I think then you'll be a really successful business. Hmm. Particularly on the green front, I think, you know, you really feel like you've thought through a lot of the things. So on, the, on that hand, I'd say very much thumbs up. Mm. Uh, you care about the environment. Mm. You know, I, I think you have to get across more that you care about your guests as well. Mm. Well, the, the $60,000 question is, do you think that you can promote or, you know, what can you do for Duncan? I'd be delighted to, <laughs> to feature you on uh, my website, uh, Green Traveller, because you're doing some fantastic things. Writing about food is my business mm. and food is my joy, so um, anyone would like to come here and eat the food. I definitely recommend this place to, to other people. I probably say it with a few provisos. OK, thank you all very yes, much you. for your yeah. time and your pleasure. comments. So how did you think that went today? Oh. Brilliant. Went very well. Thanks very much. It's great. Well, as you remember, I'm sure the whole idea was to try and get some, you know, a, a bit more of a buzz going about this place. And your green credentials have now been firmly established. Yes, established. So, have I managed? What, if anything, Duncan? Have I managed to teach you? You've taught me to be be more professional, a bit more sensible about things, and um, yeah, more professional. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you work bloody hard, Duncan, so you need to have yeah. a return from it. Because this isn't just your business. You hive off that and it's your family's mm. home. And we need to make sure that it can keep on going and you mm. can keep on making the improvements to it that you want to mm. so much. Yeah. You give me a kick up the bum, which is what I needed. So that, that's done a lot of good. Good. Yeah, I've taken the mickey, but um, I'm not really, I'm very grateful, really. Yeah, I am. OK, Don, mm. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Duncan hasn't been the easiest person to work with, but to some degree I've managed to get through to him because it is cleaner, it is more welcoming, it is better organised, his prices are higher, um, he has a much nicer bedroom than he had before, and he has an eye to the future. All in all, I'm pretty satisfied. Next time on The Hotel Inspector. Voila! <laughs> You're the one that's got to sort this side out oh, a yes. bit. Thank you very much, and you're supposed to be helping me. I don't want to go. The reality is, darling, this is the business we're in. Until then, if you fancy being whisked away to your own piece of paradise, where you can soak up the sun and swim in clear blue seas, you're in luck, as we're giving away a luxurious holiday for two to the Maldives, courtesy of the Waldorf Astoria Beach House Maldives. You and a guest will stay for seven nights full board in a beach villa on the private island resort of Ha Alifu Atoll. And you'll also receive a treatment for two in the open air spa. All you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 5 or text HOTEL to 65550. Or send your name and phone number on the back of a postcard to Hotel Inspector 1, PO Box 62244. London N8 1BB. Calls cost £1.53 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Texts cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com forward slash win.
The wedding of the decade is just a few days away, but let's remind ourselves of the story so far. Brand new tomorrow night at 8, get that bit closer to Wills and Kate. Next tonight, though, preparations for another wedding in Extraordinary People.